SwitchBot make a lot of very interesting and often unique gadgets, like the SwitchBot curtain and my personal favourite, the blind tilt. They also make a number of other devices and sensors, such as a temperature meter and hygrometer. Now, what if you didn't want to use a direct Bluetooth connection to Home Assistant, maybe because of range issues or you want to access a sensor on a remote broadband connection? Well, SwitchBot have a cloud API that lets you do just that. Recently though, they've updated that API and changed the way authentication works, which means it's a bit trickier to get working. But I've sorted that problem, so keep watching and I'll show you how. SwitchBot sent me their new Hub 2 to have a play with. This is quite an upgrade on the older Hub Mini because for starters it's got this display showing you the current temperature and humidity and that got me thinking, how can I view the temperature and humidity data from this Hub in Home Assistant? Well, there is a really easy way and that's using Matter because Hub 2 supports Matter. If you enable the Matter integration in Home Assistant and then pair the Hub 2 with Home Assistant using Matter, then those two sensors just appear straight away. It's ridiculously easy, but for this video, what I want to show you is how to get SwitchBot sensor data and even control a SwitchBot device from Home Assistant using their web-based API. In order to use the SwitchBot API, you must send a special authentication signature in the header of the request. The API documentation provides a few examples of how to create this signature by taking a combination of your SwitchBot API token, a timestamp and your API secret and passing them through an HMAC function. But how can you do that easily in Home Assistant? Well, I managed it by creating a command line sensor which calculates the required values, sticks them in as the sensor's state for you to use in other REST-based sensors and switches. Let's start at the beginning. You'll need to get your SwitchBot API token and secret first, so open up the SwitchBot app on your preferred mobile device, tap on the profile icon in the bottom right, go to Preferences and then tap on App Version 10 times. That will unlock the Developers Options menu item. Open that up and you'll be shown your token and secret key. Copy and paste those somewhere safe because you'll need them in the next step. Now we're going to start by creating a couple of text helpers to store the token and key. We'll navigate down to Settings, Devices and Services and Helpers up at the top. Click on Create Helper, find text in the list and we're going to call this first one Switch, I can't spell, SwitchBot uh, underscore token and click on Create. Edit SwitchBot token and paste in your token key. Uh, press enter to apply it and close. Now we need to do exactly the same for SwitchBot secret. So we create it called SwitchBot secret, create. Edit SwitchBot secret, paste in your key and close. Now we need to edit your configuration YAML file. I'm going to be using the file editor add-on as it's nice and easy to install from the add-on store. I'm already in file editor here and I'm editing my configuration.yaml file. Paste in this command line sensor here. I'll put a link in the video description to my website and you'll find all of the configuration on there so as you can easily copy and paste it. All this does is read the API token and secret key from those helper entities. You can see token and secret there, which is why naming them exactly as I said is important. It creates a sensor which has the value of the signature you need to authenticate against the API and an attribute called T, which contains the timestamp used. This is refreshed every 60 seconds, so as it's always valid. Save the file and reboot Home Assistant to apply that. Once it's back up and running, go to Developer Tools and States and then filter by SwitchBot underscore sign. You'll see one entity with a string as its value, that's this value here. And in its attributes section, you'll see T and a, a numeric value there. Now we need to make use of this. And the first thing I suggest you do is create a sensor which grabs a list of all of your SwitchBot devices. Not only is this a good test to see if the API is working, but it's also very handy to help you get the device IDs for everything in order to help you set up the other sensors. 
Paste in this configuration to do that. It's set to update every 3600 seconds, which is every hour. The SwitchBot API has a daily limit of 10,000 requests. So unless you really need to be updating very frequently, I suggest you be careful with the refresh values. It's calling the all devices API URL and passing in headers of your token as the authorization parameter, the latest calculated signature value and the timestamp associated with that. It'll then create a sensor called SwitchBot all devices and set the attributes uh, to body, which is basically uh, a big list of everything on your SwitchBot account. I'm going to restart Home Assistant quickly here using magical video editing techniques and show you in developer tools what that sensor looks like. Have a look at this data then. In my list I have a SwitchBot Hub 2 and this is its device ID. Make a note of any device IDs for things that you want to control or grab the data for. I'm going to make a note of the IDs for my Hub 2 and the blind tilt in my study to use in the following examples. Remember that the Hub 2 has a built-in temperature and humidity sensor. We can create a REST sensor to query the API and retrieve the values from those sensors. Paste in this configuration, let me just sort that. Here, I've set the scan interval to 300, which is five minutes. That would use up 288 of your 10,000 daily requests. So you could update it more often if you wanted to. In the resource URL here, you can see this bit here is the device ID. So you need to make sure that this is the device ID of your Hub 2, if that's what you're setting up. It could be a Hub 2 or it could be a SwitchBot meter. The data for both types of devices is exposed in the same way, so this configuration should work for both. You can customize the names and the unique IDs and there's one for humidity just here and once you've done that just uh, save it and you should be able to go to developer tools and in the YAML uh, reload just the rest entities and notify services. If I now go up to the states tab I should be able to filter by switchbot hub and there we go, look, we've got an entity for humidity and an entity for temperature. So now we've got authentication working and we've managed to read data from your devices using the API. But what if we wanted to control a SwitchBot device? Well, it involves creating several more items in the configuration. The example I'm going to show you is how to control a SwitchBot blind tilt because that's what I have to hand. But because the Hub 2 and the Hub Mini both have IR blasters built into them, you could use the same principles to send IR commands from Home Assistant and control your TV or air conditioner, for example. We start by creating a REST command entity for each specific action that we want to carry out. So for my blinds, I need a command to open them and a separate command to close them. I'm going to paste my configuration in here. You can see the device ID in both of the uh, command URLs. And then in the payload section here, you can see there is a command for fully open. And this one down here has got closed down. I got these values by reading the API documentation. And I'll put a link to the API documentation in the description. But if I scroll down to the send device control commands, uh, which is here and then I find the blind tilt entity just here. You can see in this table that it tells me the command type to use and the command itself. So you can see uh, command type of command and the command of fully open uh, will set the position of the blind tilt to open. So that's where I got the payload data from in the rest commands. If you're controlling a different device then you'll need to look up in the API documentation which payload commands are required and format it in JSON like I have here. Save and then reboot. Now to test this out you're going to need to go to developer tools and choose the services tab and if you search for rest underscore command you'll get the two commands that you created. If I select the open one and then click on call services then I don't know if the microphone's picking that up but you should be able to hear the motors running for the uh, blind tilt. There's one final touch and that is to encapsulate those two rest commands in a cover entity. If you look at this configuration, you'll see it's a very basic template cover and there's two actions. The open cover action calls the um, 
rest command to open the switch bot tilt and the close cover action calls the close rest command. You'll need to save the configuration and then probably restart Home Assistant in order to get that to appear again. And then to show you the cover entity, we go to settings, devices and services, entities and cover. And you can see this one here, study blinds switch bot API and it's just a switch that I can open and close just like that. Unfortunately, the state of that cover will not update if you control it somewhere else. The API does support the use of webhooks, which means that it can send messages straight to Home Assistant when the status of things change. But unfortunately, the blind tilt doesn't support that at the moment, so I've not been able to test it. It does work for things like the curtain bot and motion sensors, but just not the blind tilt right now. Anyway, I hope that you found this useful, and if you did, then please give the video a like, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more videos from me. Thank you for watching, goodbye.